This is an excerpt from Future Prospects, a book about the majority of athletes. Because drama doesn't follow their lives, their philanthropic efforts are not usually seen. The bus. The bus could stand as a symbol for team bonding. Over the years, the bus driver might have doubled as the team manager, play-by-play -play man, or team executive. No matter who it was, trips could be long and treacherous. Canadian winters are unpredictable. You never know what type of weather lurks around the corner. Icy roads and breakdowns are commonplace. Regardless, bus travel is the only option. The trip can be hard on the body. Pre-existing aches and pains are usually aggravated from sitting in tight quarters on an eight-hour trek. Players pass the time by playing cards, reading, doing their homework, listening to tunes, sleeping, and watching movies. Tradition has it that rookies sit in front or double up while veterans sit near the back and enjoy single seats. Mark Schuenard was with the Anaheim Ducks. London got added on during my years with Halifax. Our closest trip was three hours, and then we had 12 hours. We knew every time we left, we left for a while. You have new kids coming into play where they usually played in the region or area they grew up. They're used to a 15 minute car ride with their parents. All of a sudden, you're in a place with a bus full of guys traveling 12 to 15 hours, sleeping overnight in hotels, Right away, you figure out if you want to make the effort and if you have the conviction to actually succeed at that level. It's very high caliber. Guys that came out of our league are superstars. It's a really good trampoline to the next level. Kelly Rudy is a media personality on Hockey Night in Canada and a former NHL player. This is what he said. I would have to think going down south to Portland probably was the longest trip. Winnipeg was long, but I think Seattle and Portland were the most difficult. I enjoyed them. In fact, I can rarely think of a time when the travel became annoying to me. That's how I grew up in Edmonton. Whenever we go on a holiday, we pack up the car, pull a trailer, and head to BC. Then we'd head to Banff, Jasper, or Lake Louise. I was used to it and enjoyed it. One of my favorite things to do is read, so that gave me countless hours to read. I mention Bob Ridley virtually every time I talk about my junior life. Most people know Bob does the radio for the Medicine Hat Tigers and drives the bus. Whenever I had reading, I'd go up to the front of the bus, whether it was two in the afternoon or three in the morning, Bob and I would tell stories and talk for hours on end. The snowstorms. Anybody knows that that about Can Canadian winters that sometimes you're caught, you're just caught, and there's nothing you can do about it. I remember many times a four-hour trip turning into eight or nine hours or a little hotel or motel in some little town that I never heard of. The story I probably remember the most is coming back from Seattle at the end of a road trip. I believe this was my last year. A trip that normally took us 12 to 14 hours took us about 24 hours to get back. It was slow going. The Trans-Canada Highway was a mess. I remember we stopped at Golden for a bite to eat. All I could afford was juice and an order of toast. We made it back to Medicine Hat that late evening. When Robin Regeer was with the uh, Calgary Flames, this is what he had to say. I have a horror story. We played in Kamloops, and that night we were leaving to head to Regina for the big Eastern road swing. We drove for a few hours, and we eventually fell asleep. We woke up, and the bus was at a standstill. There was an avalanche in the mountains. We had to stop for six hours. We moved on for another couple of hours, and then there was another avalanche. We had to stop there for a few hours. By the time we had watched 
by the time, by this time, we had watched a bunch of movies, went outside and had snowball fights, throwing other people in the snowbank. We finally made it to Regina. I believe it took us 33 hours. We had actually watched every single movie we had bought for the entire trip. That was the one that will stick out in my mind forever. It was pretty memorable. If you're a rookie and a young guy, it's not very good. You're usually doubled up in a seat. It's very hard to sleep when you're sitting up. The veteran guys usually get a seat to themselves further back. They get a chance to lie down on the floor or across the seats. They're a lot more comfortable than you are. I have another traveling story. We went to Portland and there was a nice storm there. It was so bad that everything was covered by an inch of ice, absolutely everything. Here we were sitting at the hotel. We could pretty much skate to the rink on the road. We ended up having to leave. They canceled the game because there were, they were worried about people not being able to make it. It was so dangerous. Of course, we still had to get back home, so we had to drive in this. It took us 17 or 18 hours because the roads were so miserable. The bus driver kept getting out. I believe he was applying bleach to the tires for more grip somehow. We were almost home, too, when our bus broke down. Then we had to wait for another bus to come from Merritt, which took us the rest of the way to Kamloops. Paul Gentile was with the Calgary Hitmen. He says, the worst trip was probably when I was in Saskatoon. We went down to the States and we were headed from Seattle to Tri-Cities, which I believe was supposed to be a three or four hour drive. The pass we were supposed to take was closed because of the snow. We had to take a detour. We ended up on the bus all night. This was our second game in Seattle and we had had the game the next night in Tri-Cities. We ended up spending the night on the bus and got to the hotel about seven in the morning, ate breakfast and pretty much slept until game time. The other bad trip was with Calgary. We were coming back from Prince George and ended up hitting a moose on the highway. That was pretty scary. In 1986, the unthinkable happened. Two days after Christmas break, the Swift Current Broncos were embarking on two and a half hour drive to Regina when their bus skidded off the highway overpass, hit a sign, then slid down an embankment nose first. It flew approximately 50 feet in the air, landing on its side when it skidded to a halt. Four players, Scott Kruger, 20, Trent Cress, 19, Brent Ruff, 16, and Chris Manteco, 19, were killed. It was a gruesome accident. The whole hockey world mourned in disbelief. Joe Sackick was with the team at the time. He told me, we had just got on the bus and just got away from Swift Current. We were only about five minutes out. I was sitting in front of the bus. Sheldon Kennedy and I were probably talking about the Christmas holidays we just had. It was halfway through the year, so it was a tough it was tough getting back into the season. That was difficult that first game back. The season after, we did really well. I think we finished second or third and got knocked out of the second round. It pulled the whole city even closer together. Everybody, right from day one, were so good to all the players. It was our first year there. They tried to make us feel at home. Even after that, they pulled together even more. It was the first time a tragedy happened in my life. Kind of reality, kind of reality checks in. You're a little more careful about things you decide to do. You weigh the options, I guess. <laughs>